have yourself. I get to have me and let them have misbehaved and matter for me for my sake. Let's just unravel this resentment ball a little bit. There's so much locked up inside resentment. When we feel resentful, we are basically internalizing someone else's actions, thoughts, attitudes about us, and those attitudes hold us prisoner in our own life, meaning we can't be who we are. Who we are is on the other side of the resentment jail bars. And while we are in the state, we are trapped in our life. Say you're a little baby hedgehog in the sky and you are wanting to come into this life and you have some ideas of how you want that to look. You have these things you haven't experienced yet and you have kind of an idea of what that next step is going to look like. So your situation that you're born into is going to present you with because it hasn't been mastered, it's still a curiosity and a longing. There aren't the necessary structures, supports set up within your mind, within your boundary system, within your permission slips to have set up yet. It's like still a little bit foreign, you know? So naturally, it's not going to come easy. In my resentment, there's this, this internal resistance to that person or that even that thought. Each time we experience that, we're sort of like micro trauma through the day something that reminds us of that situation and then we feel that uh, reinforce the whole paradigm of what those people think about me is true oh my god please don't make it be true but some part of me kind of believes it is and i'm resentful that i can't move past it that whole story is the real truth of us that's what keeps us stuck in our life right that's what keeps us like not able to work through a certain challenge to get to the next step in our thing whatever that is right and we just keep sabotaging it's not even current it's like we might feel like we're a victim to a past us. It sounds simple. We just have to stop believing the story because then we'll stop having resentment and then we'll stop retraining our system to feel like a victim. How about we just say, oh, I totally forgive that person for doing that thing and just fill ourselves with love for them. But I, I've had it where, and a lot of people I work with have had it where you try to practice forgiveness and it's just like, ah, uh, you just feel worse. Feel more resentful as you can't forgive them. It's too big of a step. It's not at the right time. Forgiveness isn't working because it's too early. It's also forced when forgiveness is really an outcome rather than a strategy. If you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Why does it feel so awful to jump in and forgive? It can be super triggering if you were told off for not being grateful enough. It can kick up resentment for not being understood or being shamed. You're upset about something that's really hurting you and you're told you should be grateful. In your own little hedgehog heart, you're hurting. And then the shame skin that that kid now has to w go around wearing. Now they're like upset and a bad person because they can't be grateful. They're confused because they didn't think they were bad. They just thought they were upset. And now on top of that, they're bad. Now they can't even be upset about what they're upset about. They can't like express their discontent. Let's talk about, is it okay to show anger and express anger? Because one of the reasons why we can't process our resentment is because we're actually pretty mad. I mean, it's an old problem. If it's in your system. If you've been like rehashing this pattern over and over, it's most likely from something that made you really mad, not a tiny bit mad. And if it stayed this long in your system, I'm assuming if there's low level resentment, there's something to be mad about. And anger is always on top of feeling powerless. When we're angry, we're trying to assert a boundary. It clearly defines what you don't like. And so it insinuates what you do like. The thing is, our connected true self is aware when these things happen to you and is keeping score, is aware, like, that wasn't cool. I didn't deserve that. If you can't be angry, meaning you can't express discontent, it's going to store it somehow. And it's going to be processed throughout your life and your day to day as you try to find resolve around this issue because it takes energy, it drains us to be separated from our actual nature. That is going to want to be cleared it's, it's not going to want to just sit there and fester like a wound that doesn't breathe. It needs air. And that's why it stays in our system as low-level resentment. We need to understand what, why we can't forgive, why we can't feel angry. Maybe it wasn't safe. That we have this connected, intact consciousness on board with us, either consciously or under the hood, but it's operating. And it is wanting to 
be clear of this heaviness of this extra shame skin that we're wearing. Think of wearing a leather bodysuit. It's like heavy. You have to go around your whole life with this heavy leather bodysuit on and you have to interact with the world right? You don't want it. You, and so part of you is going to be like, oh, remember you have a leather bodysuit on. I think you should take it off. It's getting hot, right? You're going to get hot. Why? Because your brain is like, get this freaking thing off me, right? You're not, your body isn't going to go like, oh no, we're totally fine. No, you're going to feel uncomfortable because you'd overheat and probably pass out. You can't run fast. You can't do a lot of it because you have this thing on. Awareness of the bodysuit is resentment. See, in trauma, the hurtful thing happens therefore I don't matter. So we need to unstick ourselves from that they did that. That is why forgiveness works. Because we, when we say, I forgive you for that, we're seeing them as a, as a human being, that they had screwed up reasons for doing that. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And therefore it can't be because it's, I'm broken. It's not because we become this super loving person that can override we that that's too fast that is going to just be smothering your leather suit you're going to be trying to reach for fresh air ignoring your leather suit see how our self-concept is married to their deed and what happened because we internalize that as i'm not lovable i'm not loved so i'm not lovable and our inner child our inner being is trying to set the record straight that we're lovable and is trying to you know check the box and feel lovable again and like then we can go do gallop forward it doesn't even mean that they actually felt that way about us but it felt like they felt that way about us as a kid you know we're like our parents are like so blah 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 and they don't think i'm this and that we're right to feel that way but that might not actually be what was going through their head that's the impression made upon us it's how we feel they feel about us that is that is the thing that we're trying to course correct for the rest of our life we're like please stop feeling that way about me so i can stop feeling that way about me can i matter to myself while well, it feels like i don't matter to someone i should matter to i mean that's the tricky part that's the self-parenting that we have to do that's that's where we're like okay my turn now <laughs> you're fired in my mind i'm not you're not the one telling me how I get to think about myself or me thinking about past you and me thinking about past me isn't the one who tells me how I think about myself anymore. Can I matter to me? What that alone, like for me, that really changed things. Like, what would that feel like? What if that person didn't, I didn't ever matter the way I want to matter to that person. What if that never changed? What if I could be like, okay, I'm not going to matter to you the way and I'm going to let you be that way because I'm going to do it. That's self-love. There's a lot of resistance against self-love too because it's like, I shouldn't be the one to love all. I only love myself. Other people should love. Yes, they should love you. And what if in them loving us is us having a permission slip to accept ourselves? What if we're trying to outsource them so that we can accept ourselves? To feel absolutely broken and be like, I am needing people to show me that I'm lovable. Love myself enough to go get that. That's very different than I resent the world for making me this way. Resentment is super limiting. It's like, I mean, I, I'm not immune to it. I have it too, you know? So it's like recognizing that there's a limitation there, that we're putting a box around ourselves when we're in this vibe that the world did something to us and we're not even allowed to be that upset about it. Often when you get to feeling like you matter, your resentment isn't going to go away. It's going to get worse because you're landing inside yourself. Might actually turn resentment into what it actually is, which is anger. And anger is the software for boundaries. So it's like you need to feel wronged in order to say no and mean it. Let it be sad that this happened. You want to kick and scream at the thing. But then at some point, reparent yourself, turn around and look at your inner child. Look at that and be like, wow, I get to be sad about this. Can I love the me who had to go through this? Can I love the me who, who felt angry? Can I love the me who was in that experience? Can I love the me now that I'm having to deal with this right now? Can I love the me now who's resentful? Can I just love that me? <laughs> you know, forgiveness will happen once you start to have yourself. I get to have me and let them have misbehaved and matter for me for my sake. Then it's like, naturally your mind is going to be like, hmm, I wonder why they did that. Not rhetorically, but I generally wonder why. Because remember, you're, you're, we're, 
We're married to these belief systems. We're stuck. We're glued. We have that leather suit on, that bodysuit. It's stuck to our skin, and we can't tell that it isn't us. So what you're going to start to recognize the suit, but then part of you is going to be like, wait, I thought this was my skin. No, it's not. Wait a second. Is it? Is it not? So this is so important. That point at which you're not shifted yet, you're like in this, that to me is so important. Where you're like, maybe they were wrong about me. Oh, leather. That's the leather. I, I, you just noticed the leather, right? You awakened to the leather. You're like, aha, wait. Then that means because they did that, I'm a bad person. That starts to undo that. Do you see? Now you're now you can see the bars, you can feel the leather. So what actually would have caused them to do that? What in their life did they experience? All up until this point, you've let yourself be mad, you've let yourself grieve, you've reclaimed some sense of, yeah, I get to have a boundary around that. You felt into your little hedgehog baby self and been like, oh, poor me, right? And that brought you back online and you're like, holy crap, I've got leather on my skin that doesn't belong here. So then now you have a thought, hey, maybe my parents didn't do this because I'm broken. Well, then why did they do that? Because your mind, your logical mind is going to want to answer that question. You're, that is so important. Well, if it wasn't because I'm broken, then why was it? Because this whole time, your nervous system, since being a baby or whatever, your whole nervous system has been like, yeah, it's because I'm broken. They did that because I'm broken. They did that because I don't work. They did that because I don't function in some way. I have an unlovable gene is missing in me. Don't know why, just is, right? Your nervous system is just like that. And it reacts to the world accordingly. You're dating and it reacts. You're at work interfacing with your colleagues and it reacts. You're interfacing with your boss and it reacts. You're, inter you're going around the world interfacing with your leather skin on. And now you're like, hold the heck up. You're mattering to yourself. Then you can start to ask, well, why might they have done that? And then that will be helpful for you, not to turn you into super oneness person who's spiritual, but so that you can understand the truth of yourself. We, we, we can't collect $200 and pass go till we understand that. And so why did my parents do that is a great question to undo that. Another question you could ask is what would have to happen to a person to make them do something like this? We don't We don't excuse it anymore. They were off the hook because it's too scary to go against them, right? So in the past, we let them off the hook and you were wrong. No understanding anyone, not yourself, not them. Now you understand your worthiness and you understand well, maybe a little bit about them me coming from this perspective because you have yourself. They can misbehave or they can have misbehaved. And it doesn't mean those things that it used to mean. It doesn't create a leather suit, right? So now that you're mattering, you get to have preferences. You get to have things that you don't like. So here is a list of questions to help get you going. First is the healing angle. What resentment wants attention? If you were to be really honest right now. What if it was okay to feel resentful about that? What if it was okay? If it was okay to feel angry about it, why does this make you angry? What boundary was being violated? What desire was being denied? And this is going to be a value of yours. It's going to be something you want because this is going to have forged in you a high priority for not that and a high priority for exactly the opposite of that. You might notice in your life that you make choices around that. And then just feel whatever comes up and not analyze. That's the hard part, right? We like to figure stuff out. Feel like, oh God, they're sad me. Is it okay to be sad? Yes. Because grief often fuels the flames of our anger and our resentment. So let it be seen and felt. Second angle is reclamation. Why might they have done that according to their own trauma and their beliefs? Would have had to happen to somebody to make them do something like this. If it makes you feel extremely triggered, then ask it this way, because it's going to be better to not ask you as if you're imagining them, because you're just going to be like, there's nothing, there's no good reason. I'm not giving them a pass. I'm not even going to give them my understanding. So it's just ask the other way. Two, does thinking about that let you off the hook for being a bad person, even a little bit? Three, what about you did they get wrong this whole time? And number four, can you love the you who experienced that? Transcend an angle, take a deep breath, and ask yourself, can I feel a sense of acceptance in some mutual karma or lessons that I might have been involved in in this? That's a tough one. I would not have been involved in this lesson 
if there was not some mutual karma here. Me with this person, me with this situation. Two, own the experience. Take a deep breath. Doesn't mean that they were right. Can it be wrong that this happened, yet can it also be not wrong? This is your freedom move. This is your get out of jail card. Can the universe not be wrong? And I look at my life and go, it's okay that, that, that I had to go through that. If you feel totally triggered even hearing that, there's some reclamation and some healing coming down the pike for you. You will get to a point when you can ask yourself that question and you will not be triggered. You will be like, hell yeah, I want to own that. But why? Because it means that, that experience isn't bigger than you. That that experience isn't dictating how you get to think about yourself anymore. I, that was lived experience. There's nothing wrong about me that that happened. And there's nothing wrong about the universe that that happened. And you're going to know that because you're going to have alchemized something within you. Some knowing within you that is precious. Number three, park that person in your mind in neutral. We're not going into forgiveness. Let that happen naturally as you do all the other things. I don't want to be feeling small about that. I don't want to feel beholden and owned. I want to say, no, thank you very much. I extracted my lesson. This raises you above belief that you're small because that happened. Forgiveness will come as you keep owning your anger and your lived experience, as you keep disowning the skin of them of how to regard your wonderful baby hedgehog self. Making sense? There is a free self-love course in the description below. I hope you take advantage of that. And also, if you need extra support, I offer coaching sessions. The link in the description. Like, subscribe if you want to hear more of these things. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. And you really are a cute little baby hedgehog. Bye-bye. See you later.